Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm Father Stefanos Alexopoulos, the director of the Institute for the Study of Eastern Christianity and associate professor of liturgical studies and sacramental theology here at Catholic University of America. I'm very pleased to welcome you here this evening for this joyous celebration, celebrating Armenian studies at the Catholic University of America. To begin, I would like to ask His Grace Serpazan Viken Aikazian to offer us the beginning prayer. Please stand. O Lord, creator of the universe and our risen savior. In this setting of faith and knowledge, on this day of remembrance and respect, we ask your blessing on all those gathered here who share a spirit of friendship and common aspiration. Lord, we remember the gentle spirit of Professor Robert Thompson, the great scholar of Armenian studies, whose legacy of knowledge embodied in the 3,000 volume of personal library we celebrate today. We honor the foresight of the family of the late Professor Thompson for their magnanimous gift of these precious collections of books. We are grateful to Catholic University of America, its administrators and faculty, its schools of theology and religious education, and especially its newly formed Institute for the Study of Eastern Christianity for the advancement of learning they have undertaken, which helps bring the light of ancient Christian tradition into the modern world. Among those faithful tradition is the Armenian Christian heritage, whose children today continue protect and defend the legacy of their ancestors against destructive and hostile forces. Protect those children, Lord. Vindicate their trust. And in that spirit, shine your light on all the nations of the world and all of your children, especially those who labor under physical or spiritual oppression where they may live. In these days of hardship and anxiety, at home and abroad, we pray that you will make your presence felt even more strongly among us, O oh God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Your Grace. What a, what a joyous occasion to celebrate Armenian studies at the Catholic University of America. In 2020, the family of the late Robert W. Thompson, the Kalust Kulbekian Chair and Professor of Armenian Studies at Oxford University, graciously donated his personal research library to the Semitics Department and i Library of the Catholic University of America. This marvelous strength, gift strengthens both the library and the mission of the Institute for the Study of Eastern Christianity, which aims to foster and focus the study of Eastern Christianity in all its expressions, in particular, the Armenian tradition. Please join me in celebrating the Thompson family who have joined us this evening and recognize them. Thank you so very much. I'm honored now to call to the podium Father Mark Morozovich, the Dean of the School of Theology and Religious Studies, a colleague and a friend, the person behind this initiative, the person whose vision, commitment, and insistent, insistence made possible the Institute for the Study of Eastern Christianity. Father Mark. Thank you. 
Good evening and a hearty welcome to all. First of all, I'd like to bring you greetings from our president, Peter Kilpatrick, who unfortunately wanted to be here and he said, Father, I just have another complication and I'm not able to be here, as well as our provost, Aaron Dominguez. They're very thrilled with this wonderful, generous donation from the Thompson family and wanted me to extend their welcome to all gathered here today. Now in my own name, it's a great joy. I myself am a Ukrainian Catholic priest. And so having come here to the Catholic University of America first as a student in 1986, mind you, a long time ago, it was a great joy to to learn my theology, to be with such esteemed colleagues, and now to come back not only as a professor, first in 2003, but to be serving as the dean of the School of Theology and Religious Studies as a Byzantine priest, bringing a whole different view, has been a great honor, a great privilege to be with my colleagues and to be able to help to build out, to reach out to all of the Eastern churches. And it's a distinct honor and privilege to be hosting our, our friends from the Armenian community and to celebrate this great gift of the Thompson family. So welcome, and I hope that this is just the beginning of many occasions when you join us here at Catholic University. God bless you and thank you. A quiet hero on our campus, a mighty scholar, but also a paradigm of careful scholarship who teaches courses in Georgian, Armenian, and Syriac, and oversees the collections of the i Library is Dr. Monica Blanchard. She is the heart, the mind, and the soul of the i Library now greatly enriched by the addition of the Thompson Collection. Please welcome Dr. Monica Blanchard. Thank you all very much. Um, I'm just going to say a few words about Armenian um, and Armenian studies um, uh, here at the Catholic University of America. Um, the Catholic University of America has always taught and studied Armenian within the larger context of the literatures and history of the Christian East, as it does for Christian Arabic, for Coptic, for Ethiopic, for Syriac, and for Greek. Um, the interest in and study of Armenian here goes back to the very first person to be offered a position on the faculty of the new university. This person was Henri Ivernat. Um, he accepted his position in 1887, and the university opened in 1889. Uh, in the meantime, during those two years, he was busy um, out in the Middle East on um, um, a, uh, an expedition for the French government, but also with a view to um, uh, learning about and uh, making provision for um, uh, a museum collection for the new university. Um, Henri Ivernat and um, then his students, Arthur Adolphe Vachalde and um, a very young Patrick W. Skian, 
who most of us know much better as um, one of the original members of the uh, translation team for the Dead Sea Scrolls, continued this work of teaching classical Armenian, reading the text with students who were also studying um, the other languages of the Christian Near East. Um, professor Robert Meyer, who was the professor of Celtic and comparative philology at the university, um, also offered classical Armenian studies between 1947 and 1976 um, um, as he uh, could fit it into his schedule. And since the late 1980s and early 1990s, Professor Robin Darling Young and um, I um, have um, also um, um, taken on very happily um, the work of introducing new students to um, the joys of classical Armenian and its wonderful literature and history. Um, so, to give you a complete story, um, I'd be talking for an hour or more. <laughs> so, um, I will just say, along with everybody else, um, how wonderful it is to see so many, many people here today um, to enjoy this event. Thank you. On your way out, make sure you pick up this booklet about Henry Hivernot, the grand old man of the university, which outlines uh, his contribution uh, to Armenian studies uh, and to the study of Eastern Christian culture and traditions uh, at Catholic University. Reflecting the long history of Armenian studies at the Catholic University of America, this event tonight is paired with an exhibit on Armenian books at the, in the Catholic University of America collections in the May Gallery, uh, room 119 of Mullen Library. This exhibit both illustrates the study of Armenian culture here at the Catholic University of America and features the Robert W. Thompson collection. I encourage all of you to visit this exhibit uh, curated by uh, Dr. Blanchard. Years ago, as a doctoral student, I first met Robin Darley Young. I was immediately struck by the breadth and quality of her scholarship, her generosity and kindness towards students and colleagues, and by her dedication to the study of the Armenian Christian tradition. Who would imagine that years later, in 2013, we would both join the faculty of the School of Theology and Religious Studies at the Catholic University of America and share in the vision of establishing the Institute for the Study of Eastern Christianity. Please welcome Professor uh, Robin Darling Young, a colleague, a friend, a mentor. Thompson, Jasper, Megan Thompson, and your son, Seth and Max, uh, welcome. Serpazan Agazian, Serpazan Findikian, Derhair Choyoyan, I hope I have, I, I cannot read my own writing, so forgive my pronunciation. Derhair Karapetian, Yeretskin Kelejian, so good to see you. Uh, Mr. Shahinian, uh, colleagues and friends. Uh, I, I know I speak for all my colleagues in expressing profound thanks to the Thompson family uh, for your wonderful gift 
and thanks to our honored guests for your presence here as we celebrate this gift to our research library, ICAR, of the collection of Robert W. Thompson, Memory Eternal. We honor a great and generous scholar, and we are very pleased that we can do that this evening. The university is grateful not only for the books themselves, but for the man and the work of the man they silently attest. To sit beside them in the i library, as I have the good fortune to do, is to be brought in memory to the, jo to the joy, tempered by awe, and yes, a little bit of anxiety, of having been instructed in the language at the Dumbarton Oaks Library and Museum by Professor Thompson in the years when he was its director and generously offered to teach the language to local scholars who might not otherwise have had the opportunity. Now for me, I first heard Robert Thompson at the University of Chicago in the spring quarter of 1977 when he um, gave a lecture in Regenstein Library. He had offered a course introduction to classical Armenian when he was there as a visiting professor, which I, because I was then young and foolish, to quote a former president, failed to take. <laughs> a happy coincidence, however, led me to begin the study of the language in 1984-85 in Oxford, and then to discover happily that Professor Thompson would be teaching the second year of classical Armenian upon my return in 1985-86. And when the person who was teaching me at Oxford learned that he would be there, she said in her very um, commanding way, you must do it. <laughs> and so I did. Um, the scholarly life is a network, an invisible web and already, my friend Monica had studied with Professor Thompson so that later in that decade, we could work together on the translation of Yezni Kochbatsi, many happy hours spent in the basement trying to figure out what Yezni could possibly have meant in that sentence. Uh, and another skein of the web uh, led to the publication just a month ago with our very esteem, esteemed student, Der Heyer Hosep Karapetyan, of a mini, medieval Armenian text, text, the fascinations of which I do not have time to review now. As a teacher, Professor Thompson, who made this possible, was exacting, astounding, rightly demanding, and also generous, encouraging, and patient. We all owe him so much, uh, and we're very, very grateful for his life and his works, which are truly monumental. Uh, I, I cannot list them all here, but we can easily share them with you, uh, and many of them are in our library, thanks also to the Thompsons, and, um, and the, uh, the amazing career and dedication of Professor Thompson has made possible so much more work um, that really we could say he was an illuminating presence. So thank you very much. Other than Professor Robin Darling Young, Another person who opened for me the treasure chest of the Armenian tradition is His Grace Serpazan Daniel Findikian. He was my professor during my doctoral years. He served both on the board of my candidacy exams and my dissertation. Bishop Daniel is an outstanding example of a bishop scholar who combines generosity, kindness, and pastoral outreach with academic excellence and groundbreaking research. Please welcome His Grace, Serpazan Daniel Findikian. Thank you, Father Stefanos, for overly generous words. 
Kedashnor Sirpazan Hai, Siri Lider Hairer, clergy, dear colleagues, the Thompson family, Mrs. Thompson, friends, students. Um, it is truly my distinct honor uh, and joy to speak to you this evening as we celebrate the establishment here at the Catholic University of America of the Robert W. Thompson Research Collection. I wish to thank the Institute for the Study of Eastern Christianity and my former uh, classmate, esteemed colleague, and dear friend now for many years, Reverend uh, Dr. Mark Morozovic and all of your colleagues, our colleagues, for inviting me to take part in this evening's celebration. Indeed. It is really nice to be back at Catholic University and to see so many colleagues and friends, uh, as well as members of the Washington, D.C. Uh, Armenian community. And again, I wish to greet uh, Mrs. Thompson and uh, your family as well for doing all of us the honor of being here on this occasion. As we're sharing anecdotes about uh, Professor Thompson, I will add my own. I first met uh, Professor Thompson some 30 years ago while I was a young doctor, I'm still young, by the way, <laughs> a young doctoral student uh, at the Pontifical Oriental Institute in Rome. And during a research trip to Oxford University to study Armenian manuscripts in the Bodleian Library, with some trepidation, I decided to cold call uh, the renowned professor and ask if he might perhaps have time for a visit. And to my real delight, he welcomed me warmly to his office. And there, for well over an hour, we had a thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable conversation on all manner of bookish uh, topics of common interest. Um, at one point, I asked Professor Thompson about one of his many groundbreaking works, uh, this one, The Teaching of St. Gregory, an early Armenian catechism. Thompson's 1970 work is an English translation with characteristically meticulous introduction annotation of a likely fifth century Armenian textbook on the rudiments of the Christian faith. The work is traditionally attributed to St. Gregory the Illuminator, uh, who baptized the pa pagan Armenian king Dertad, uh, bringing to the Armenian people, uh, I quote now, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ, to quote St. Paul in his second letter to the Corinthians. For a time, St. Uh, Thomas Thompson's translation of the teaching of St. Gregory made this incomparable witness to the gospel as understood by the early Armenian church available to uh, the modern world for the first time. But the book was long out of print. I asked the erudite scholar if he had ever considered possibly republishing his work. And so reaching behind him, behind his chair to the wall, uh, of books behind him, uh, he extracted a tattered tome, countless and sundry note jotted shards of paper tucked between its pages. It will need a great deal of revision, he noted soberly as he perused the book. Several years later, uh, when I was at St. Nerissa Seminary, at my continued urging, uh, Thompson published a completely revised translation of the teaching of St. Gregory with greatly expanded commentary as the premier volume of the St. Nerses Armenian Seminary's Avant series, Treasures of the Armenian Christian Tradition. As a teacher and bishop of the Armenian Church this evening, I should like to briefly reflect upon Robert Thompson's scholarly life work and legacy as they relate precisely to those treasures of the Armenian Christian tradition. At the same time, I would like to think about what responsibilities and opportunities might lie ahead for us, and especially for you, uh, the Catholic University, as particular heirs of Professor Thompson's precious legacy. Just two days ago, I returned from a short visit to Jerusalem where I attended the opening of the newly renovated Museum of the Armenian Patriarchate. Among other priceless 
religious artifacts, the museum now houses the spectacular 6th century Musrara bird mosaic, which was found over a century ago outside the Damascus Gate in the Arab quarter of the Holy City. Talk about treasures of the Armenian Christian tradition. So this is a, um, I won't say massive, but one could almost say massive, probably 10 to 15 yards long and five yards or so across, a mosaic that laid in the floor of a one-time Armenian uh, memorial chapel in that place since, since the sixth century. Um, parts of this mosaic may actually predate even the sixth century. Um, because the Armenian Patriarchate of Jerusalem is the only remaining sector of the Armenian church that continues to follow the old Julian calendar, this year I actually had the opportunity to celebrate the Armenian Feast of the Holy Translators for a second time last Saturday, 13 days after we observed the feast day here in the United States in the Armenian church. In common parlance, the Holy Translators refers to the fourth century monk Saint Mesrob Mashtots and his patron, the Catholicos Saint Sahag. The Catholicos commissioned Saint Mesrob to create an alphabet for the Armenian language for the express purpose of translating the Bible into the Armenian vernacular. Saint Mesrob and his disciples completed this momentous work around the year 405 AD. By the way, the Musrara bird mosaic in Jerusalem happens to contain one of the earliest surviving inscriptions employing St. Mesrob's new alphabet. According to the hagiography of St. Mesrob written by his student Goryun, now armed with the sacred scriptures in the language of his people, St. Mesrob, and I quote, embarked immediately upon the art of evangelism Zavedaranagan Arvestan, continuing the quote, setting out through the districts, he captured the Armenian people away from their ancestral pagan traditions, away from enslavement to satanic idolatry, and brought them to obedience to Christ. End of the quote. Goryun tells us that in addition to the sacred scriptures, the Holy Translators also rendered a number of unspecified liturgical and patristic works from Greek and Syriac into Armenian. In recent decades, scholars, among them Professor Thompson, have identified a number of works that were translated in the early to mid fifth century. These include the earliest surviving version of the Armenian lectionary of Jerusalem, definitively dated to the year 439 AD at the latest. Also in the liturgical realm are numerous prayers and many hymns, sharagans, associated with certain feasts originating in Jerusalem and still in use in the Armenian church today. Armenian translations of a number of patristic writings have also been dated to the fifth century. These include hymns, biblical commentaries, and other theological writings by such authors as Ephraim the Syrian, Cyril of Jerusalem, John Chrysostom, and many others. There can be really little doubt that the translation of all of these must be credited to the holy translators and their school during what has been dubbed the golden age of Armenian literature. Speaking of St. John Chrysostom, Sur Povanes Voske Peran, he is especially cherished by the Armenian church. After the various books of the Bible itself, more Armenian manuscripts of St. John Chrysostom's writings survive today than of any other author. Intriguing as well is another circumstance regarding the golden mouth. During my years as a student in Rome, I had the opportunity to visit the famous Sistine Hall in the Vatican Library. The columns of this hall are covered in frescoes from the year 1590, depicting the creators of many of the world's alphabets, the so-called inventors of letters. Of course, I entered this hall and I eagerly paced around the hall looking for the Armenian letters, expecting to find a superb mosaic of St. Mesrob. 
To my astonishment, what I discovered instead was the image of St. John Chrysostom holding in his hands a tablet containing the Armenian alphabet. Needless to say, this discovery caused me no little consternation and actually lost sleep for quite a while. It was a matter of years, actually. Um, was it conceivable that this depiction, prominently displayed in a study hall used for 500 years by innumerable scholars, could be based on a grievous factual error. Hard to imagine. Or, just as unthinkably, was it possible that the 1,500-year-old attribution to St. Mestrob as the creator of the alphabet, Armenian alphabet was a mistake? Equally unthinkable. I have to confess that as of yet, I haven't solved this problem uh, confidently. What I do know is that St. John Chrysostom was exiled to and died in the ancient city of Comana Pontica in central Anatolia in the year 407. Recall that the translators uh, translated the Bible already by, they created the alphabet already by the year four or five or so. Um, this area, Comana, Comana Pontica, was populated by Armenians almost continuously through the early 20th century, and we know what happened then. It is intriguing to imagine a plausible meeting between the Golden Mouthed and the Holy Translators, who would soon translate some of his written works. In fact, this is exactly what the prolific early 19th century Armenian Catholic Mechitarist monk, Father Revont Alishan, alleged, uh, in addition to a number of other things. In his monumental hagiographic work, Hushigik Hayrenyats Hayots, Remembrances of the Armenian Homeland, Alishan devotes an entire chapter to St. John Chrysostom, in which he argues cogently that the golden mouthed is indeed himself one of the holy translators, having collaborated with St. Mesrob and his school in the creation of the Armenian alphabet. In any case, a curious circumstance regarding the Feast of the Holy Translators is the fact that besides St. Mesrob and St. Sahag, a number of other church fathers are commemorated, specifically St. Movses the Rhetor, Movses Kertoren, St. David the Invincible Philosopher, David Anhacht, St. Gregory of Nareg, and St. Nerses of Gala, known as the Gracious One. These church fathers, dating from the sixth through the 12th centuries are not known to have been translators at all, even if each of them is heroic in his patristic literary contributions to the church. All of their works are original writings. The 10th century mystic Saint Gregory of Nadeg, as you know, recently proclaimed doctor of the Catholic Church, does not seem to have known any language except his native tongue. It's worth pointing out yet again, I love to do this, that St. Gregory of Nadeg was never a member of the Catholic Church. He likely would not have recognized a Catholic if he had tripped over one. And he rarely, if ever, left his monastic cell on the southwest shores of Lake Van in far eastern Anatolia. One can only applaud Pope Francis for recognizing orthodoxy outside the traditional boundaries of Roman Catholicism. As for Nerses Shnorali, the gracious one, he surely knew Greek and likely knew Latin, but I am not aware of any translation work attributed to him. Indeed, the sheer magnitude of his magnificent poetry, hymnology, doctrinal, dogmatic, ecumenical, and pastoral writings, all of it original literary work, leaves one hard pressed to imagine how, why, or when he could have turned his attention to translating. Incidentally, a major international conference on St. Nerses is being planned at the Vatican next year on the 850th anniversary of this most prolific saint's death. So, why does the Armenian church laud these post-fifth century fathers as translators? How can someone who is not a polyglot 
be considered a translator. The only conceivable answer, to me anyway, is that the Armenian church understands translation as something more inclusive than simply rendering a text from one language to another. Obviously, the post-5th century saints commemorated with saints Mesrob and Sahag had no role in the invention of the Armenian alphabet. I would submit that these latter saints occupied themselves with what I might coin meta-translation. By this, I mean translating not linguistically, but culturally, not from word to word, but from worldview to worldview. In essence, isn't this precisely what St. Mesro and his disciples sought out to do, but at a more rudimentary level? Gorion's Vita of Mesrob emphasizes again and again that, the letter, that letters were needed if the people of Armenia were to adopt the Christian faith. A native Armenian alphabet was the prerequisite for what Gorion, so Chrysostom-like, refers to as the art of evangelization. Sahag, Mesrob, and their saintly school comprised the original translators. By effectuating Armenian literature and translating the Bible and other Christian sources into Armenian, they paved the way for the meta-translators, Movses the Rhetor, David the Philosopher, Gregory of Nadeg, and Nerses the Gracious One. These second-generation translators and their colleagues, many, many, many of them, over the centuries, in invented the original literature that was needed to translate the Christian faith to succeeding generations. By their inspired writings, the meta-translators delivered to Armenian perpetuity what Gorion called, quote, the whole fervor of the truth of the faith accordant with the gospel. End of the quote. They challenged each era's spiritual and philosophical notions, the ideological fashions of the times by translating eternal truths into the prevailing cultures, ideas, and Weltanschauungen. They ensured that the Armenian church and the Bible would not be fossilized in the fifth century world of the first translators, but would be ever vital and compelling for all who seek the wisdom, truth, joy, and hope of Jesus Christ. Translators and meta-translators are the agents of what the church refers to as her holy tradition. They perpetually breathe life into the Christian witness and testimony of past epochs. Okay, Bishop Daniel, you're straying. Get to the point. <laughs> the point is this. Robert Thompson was at the same time a translator and a meta-translator in the very best tradition of the Armenian holy translators. In the tradition of Sahag and Mesrob, he was a pioneer. At a time when most primary Armenian literary sources from late antiquity and the Middle Ages were largely inaccessible in any modern language, Professor Thompson set out upon nothing short of a campaign to translate many of these works into English, making them available to Western scholars for the first time always accompanied by introductions and critical, philological, historical, and where appropriate, astute theological analysis. Thompson's works established the foundation for countless subsequent students and studies. Indeed, so momentous was his program of translation that one would be hard pressed to find any serious work in any branch of medieval Armenian studies that would not be indebted to Thompson's research and writing cited by his name. Few are the scholars in any field 
who could be so acclaimed. A master of multiple ancient languages, Thompson's translation work also embraced Syriac and Georgian studies, the latter being increasingly recognized as imperative for our understanding of Armenian and, in general, Caucasian history, Christianity, liturgy, art, and architecture, among other fields of inquiry. There being no basic textbook in the classical Armenian language of the classical Armenian language for English speakers, Professor Thompson authored his Introduction to Classical Armenian decades ago, which until today is used by many who would begin their foray into Armenian reality prior to the last hundred years or so. His textbook of modern Western Armenian, co-authored with Professor Kevork Bardakchian, gave students of Armenian studies access to modern literature and scholarly studies in the modern language. The list of scholarly tools authored by Professor Thompson goes on and on. It could well be said that as the fifth century Armenian translators created the alphabet that made Armenian literature possible, in a similar way, Professor Thompson's translations, textbooks, and instruments for Armenian studies opened a new era in Armenian scholarship. And as the meta-translators delivered the Armenians' ancestral identity to ever new generations, rethought, refreshed, and refined, Thompson's vast historical studies and countless shorter analytical essays similarly reassessed prevailing views. Drawing primary source materials into dialogue with one another, interpreting them in fresh new ways in the best tradition of critical historiography, the scholar reached conclusions that were sometimes controversial but always intriguing, achievements that always moved the yardstick of our knowledge ahead. So this evening, we celebrate Professor Thompson's gracious bequest by which his precious library has been translated, to use the term now in its physical sense, to the Catholic University of America. His, what I call, life work, learning, and legacy are in your hands now. Professors, scholars, students, benefactors, administrators. Surely you will not be content simply to house the professor's books, nor merely to catalog and shelve them, trusting that from time to time some intrepid soul will open the pages of one or another of them. I am quite certain that Professor Thompson would have never judged the work of translation to be complete. It will, be, it will need a great deal of revision Thompson noted to me when he turned the tattered pages of the first edition of his teaching of St. Gregory. I believe, as I am sure many of you do, that our various fields of study, theology, history, liturgy, Armenian and other Eastern Christian studies are in need indeed of a great deal of revision, of refreshing, of re-examination. We are in need of meta-translators to build upon our accrued learning, to challenge it, and to apply what we learn to today's culture, today's uncritical assumptions, today's worldviews, many of them tragically distorted. This Catholic University of America, in tandem with other institutions of Armenian higher learning, such as St. Nerses Armenian Seminary, has the opportunity and the competence to lead the way in translating the treasures that Professor Thompson uncovered in Armenia and its neighbors for the edification and the welfare of our students and of this troubled world today. Gorion writes that the first lines of scripture translated by St. Mesrob and his holy team came from the first words of the Proverbs, to know wisdom and counsel, 
to discern the words of genius. In this spirit of the Holy Translations, let us proceed. In celebrating tonight, we honor Robert Thompson's memory and the abundant scholarship in Armenian Christianity that he produced and express our deep and profound gratitude to his family for this marvelous gift that will make available to current and future students and scholars these great resources on Armenian history, language, and culture. I would like to ask uh, Mr. Jasper Tom, uh, Thompson to come to the podium and offer remarks. Thank you for all being here. Um, I especially want to thank the bishop for those incredibly kind words about um, Robert's scholarship. That's um, very meaningful. Um, the library that we donated, um, it was important for me when he passed to, <clears throat> there were two unfinished things for Robert. Um, one was finding a home for this library, which I'm very grateful to um, Tim Greenwood of Oxford and now St. Andrews, who's a colleague of many of you. Uh, who, who pointed me to Robin right away when I inquired with him where would be a good home for this uh, uh, collection, this unique collection that he had put together over 50 or 60 years. Um, and uh, uh, the other unfinished um, task of Robert's is a final academic uh, project of his that he was working on for a good four or five years, which is a uh, translation of Vardan's commentary on the Psalms, which will be hopefully published by Brill next year. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. There'll be one final thing to go in the library from, from Robert Thompson. Um, but the library itself, his, his academic collection, um, uh, they, my parents lived in Oxford when he retired from the University of Oxford, and if you uh, visited him there, you know he had a very, they lived in a very small Victorian row house, which doesn't lend itself well to large academic collections of, of books. Um, so at, at the point of his retirement from Oxford, uh, this set off a great uh, shelf building project throughout the house. And um, it was always a, a point of amusement to me that quite literally every room in that house had bookshelves but for the bathroom. That was the only, <laughs> the only room Robert would not uh, agree to put a bookshelf in. Um, but all the other rooms had to, had to take bookshelves uh, to house this uh, collection that, that eventually made its way over here. Um, certainly a labor of love, I think, pulling it all together. Um, I, I have to uh, recognize that Judith, his wife, who's here, um, you know, was very um, critical to the beginning of Robert's uh, career at, at, at Harvard, uh, doing a lot of the typing uh, for him before he was a known scholar and had many assistants and was the, the dean or the uh, chair of his department. Um, and I'll, I'll throw a nod to my younger brother, Crispin, who actually undertook the insane uh, task of boxing up all 120 boxes of books and other uh, things and carrying them down from uh, the, the second and third floors uh, of that tiny uh, Victorian row house and uh, making a giant stack of them on the first floor. Um, but it was uh, quite a twisting path to get here, to uh, um, get them across the, uh, the ocean. I want to thank especially Monica and, and Robin for handling all the logistics and making sure that got done 
on Catholic's end, and I'm just incredibly pleased that a lot of other students and scholars will get to um, utilize his, his uh, academic collection. That's uh, very meaningful to all of us in his family. Thank you for having us. Please join me in expressing to the Thompson family our profound gratitude for this marvelous gift. Thank you. Your gift, the gift of the Thomson Collection, is already bearing fruit. Our commitment to the Armenian studies at the Catholic University of America remains very strong and even, it is even stronger now. As a student, I first heard of St. Nerses Seminary through the St. Nerses Theological Review. That's how I found out about the seminary. And I would always go to the volumes of St. Nerses uh, Theological Review to explore aspects of Armenian language, culture, and of course, my interest, liturgy. And I'm very happy to announce that St. Nerses Theological Review from now on will be published through Catholic University of America Press. demonstrating our commitment to Armenian studies. And I am thrilled to announce the Grace and Paul Shahinian Armenian Christian Art and Culture Lecture Series. This annual lecture series will be initiated, and please mark your calendars, which means you take out your cell phone, <laughs> And you go to March 23rd of 2023. Do that right now, please. <laughs> I, want to make sure, I want to make sure you all are here then. The first lecture of the series is titled Armenia and the World in Art and Text. And the speaker is Professor Christina Maranchi of Harvard University. I'm looking forward to seeing you all on March 23rd, 2023. Through the great generosity of Mr. Shahinian, whose presence I would like to acknowledge, <laughs> the wonderful gift of the Thompson Collection that we celebrate today and your continued support. Armenian studies at the Catholic University of America will have a healthy and strong future. Let us close with a prayer and I invite Bishop Daniel to come to the podium. After the closing prayer, please join us in the reception to continue celebrating the legacy of Robert Thompson. Thank you. Please stand. Lord Jesus Christ, our hope, our defender, our protector, bless and keep all of your people in peace by the sign of your holy and precious cross. Deliver us from every visible and invisible enemy, and always bless us with the truth of your holy gospel, strengthening us and fortifying us in all that we do in your holy name, now and always, and through the ages of ages. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Amen.